ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون فان اصدق حديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجاهدوا في الله حق جهاده هو اجتباكم وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج ملة ابيكم ابراهيم هو سماكم المسلمين من قبل وفي هذا ليكون الرسول عليكم ليكون الرسول شهيد عليكم وتكونوا شهداء على الناس فاقيموا الصلاه واتوا الزكاه واعتسموا بالله هو مولاكم فنعم المولى ونعم النصير uh, before i mean start the khutbah I want to mention a narration uh, that we hear from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this Jum'ah that we have here in the dunya likewise there will be a Jum'ah that will take place in the uh, akhirah in Jannah and they mention about you know in the Jum'ah we have sufuf right we have lines and at in the Jum'ah that will take place uh, on the Friday the the gathering that will take place on the Friday in Jannah will take place and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be the, the the leader of that gathering and those people who come closest to the front okay closest to the front in, in the dunya they will be closest to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in akhirah and so it's a request to those people who are sitting at the back unless obviously you're very old to just try and come forward because this is a um, what we learn from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that those people who try to make an effort to come close there will be a qareeb min an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that's just uh, something to think about now um i mentioned this ayah that is mentioned in surah al-hajj allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed this surah surah al-hajj and in surah al-hajj allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the ahkam of hajj some of the rulings of hajj um and he finishes this entire surah with this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa jahidu fi llah haqqa jihad هو اجتباكم وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج ملة ابيكم ابراهيم الله سبحانه وتعالى what he's trying to make us understand is that the purpose of hajj if we understand hajj we realize what 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 is the purpose of hajj we will understand our deen as a whole we will understand what is the purpose of our deen as a whole and if you reflect upon the hajj in and of itself in terms of what we do in hajj it is following Millata abina Ibrahim following the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salam when we do the tawaf we do the tawaf around the Kaaba the Kaaba was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam wa id yarfa Ibrahim al qawaida min al bayt wa Ismail rabbana taqabbal minna innaka tasmi'ul alim so this tawaf that we do we are doing it around the Kaaba which Ibrahim alayhi salam built when we do the sa'i we do the sa'i because Ibrahim's wife Hajar alayha salam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her she is the one that ran from Safa and Marwa so that's why we do the sa'i when we do the the, the throwing of the sto- stones at the jamarat on the shaitan why do we do that because ibrahim alayhi salam when he was ordered to go and slaughter his son as he was on in the journey to go and slaughter his son the shaitan came to him and he pelted stones at him and even then the actual slaughter itself why do we do the the sacrifice at the udhiyah at the end of hajj because ibrahim alayhi salam was ordered to sacrifice his son And so we understand this whole concept of Hajj we realize that it is following in the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salam and it's important for us to understand who this person was 
Ibrahim alayhi salam was somebody who was truly tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that um, we tested him. We, we test Ibrahim Rabbuhu bi kalimatin fa'atammahunna. Remember, when we tested Ibrahim, we gave him ibtila. We gave him true test. Bi kalimatin, with certain awamir, with certain commands, fa'atammahunna. And what the ulama say about this word fa'atammahunna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you, if you know Arabic, the, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That, the, you tested Ibrahim bi kalimatin, and normally you would say fa'atammaha. The ha would attach to the kalimat. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Fa'atamma hunna. And hunna is jama. Meaning that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Ibrahim alayhi salam was tested with kalimat, with, with these commandments, he completed them, hunna. Meaning that these commandments were difficult. Think about the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he goes against his father, Azar, and he smashes up all the idols. And then what does he do? He is, to, he is told to leave his city. So he leaves his city. And then he's told to, throw, to, to jump into the fire. Jump into a fire? He's told to jump into a fire. And he jumps into the fire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for him. And then he's told now to go and travel. Go and travel with his wife and his child. His child, who he hasn't, he hasn't had a child for a long period of time. And he eventually has a child and now he's ordered to go and go on a journey. A long journey in the middle of the Arabian desert. They get to the middle of the Arabian desert and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Okay, now leave them there. Wife and child, test, ibtila. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam, he leaves his wife and child there. And then he's required to come back. And then after a period of time when his wife and child eventually come back, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Now go take your son out and sacrifice him. Look at the test. I mean, you, you, sometimes you, th you think about this and you think, SubhanAllah, what test have we got? We're not, we're not told to jump into a fire. We're not told to sacrifice our children. We're not told to leave our wives in the, in, in the desert. That's the test that Ibrahim salam was required to do. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, mahunna. He completed them. He was sincere alayhi salam. And then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala inni ja'iluka nasi imama. I will make you an imam for people. I will make you a leader for people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He not only tests Ibrahim alayhi salam with certain difficulties, but Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam also completes those tests. And he's patient amongst that difficulty. The thing that we have to understand is, following this kind of discourse, when Ibrahim alayhi salam builds the Kaaba, he makes a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of the duas that he makes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasulan minhum. Oh Allah, send the people who come here, where the Kaaba is, send them, Rasul and Minhum, a messenger from them. And he tells it, uh, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give him four tasks. Yatlu alayhim ayatika, that he will, re he will recite to them your signs. al kitab wal hikmah, and he will teach them the book and wisdom. him, and he will purify them. Innaka anta al azizul hakim. This is the dua that Ibrahim alayhi salam makes. And remember, where is Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim alayhi salam is in desert. He's in the middle of desert. Okay, it's not like the Arabia that we see now, it's desert. He builds this Kaaba and just makes the wa ba'ath fihim rasul amin. Hundreds and hundreds of years later, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is born. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is given the wahi. And he, as he says, Ana da'watu abi Ibrahim. I am the, the dua of my father Ibrahim. And if you look at the purpose of um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was his purpose? Tawheed. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where, where, was, where was he required to establish that? And where was he required to take out shirk? At the Kaaba. At the Kaaba. And we see this dua, what, what, does, Allah, what does the Ibrahim alayhi salam say? He says, that he, that he recite to them your signs, and that he will you know, um, teach them the book and, and wisdom, and that he he mentions Yuzakihim at the end. Because if you look at the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where does he, Yuzakki, where does he purify the Kaaba at the end of his life? At Fatiha Makkah, what does he do? He purifies the Kaaba and destroys all the idols. And so the purpose of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was what? To remove shirk from this, from this Baytullah. From this Bayt that was built by Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. 
And this is something that's important for us. But what's interesting is, in Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before the ayah that I recited to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the ahkam of Hajj. And in there, He says that, you know this udhiyah that you do at the end of the Hajj? What are you supposed to do with that sacrifice? What are you supposed to do with the, with the meat that you, you sacrifice? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions four people. أَطْعِمُ الْبَائِسِ الْفَقِيرِ وَأَطْعِمُ الْقَانِعِ الْمُعْتَرِ Okay, he says that you should feed the ba'is. The ba'is is the one who is in extreme, extreme state of difficulty, extreme state of stress, extreme state of pain, suffering, something going on in his, in his life. Maybe he's somebody who's got a loan, or going through a court case, or going through some, some type of difficulty. That's ba'is. You're supposed to feed that person. The next he says, al-faqir. And faqir, many people, we think the faqir is, uh, you know, just like any old poor person. But faqara in the Arabic language means that when your back is broken. Meaning that somebody in so much difficulty, so much stress, that their back is broken, they, they, they can't continue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you are supposed to be helping those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say, at'imu al-muslimin. He doesn't say, feed the Muslims. He said, feed who? Al-ba'is al-faqir. That could be anybody from, from people. It could be anybody. And then he goes on to say, أَطْئِمُ الْقَانِعْ وَالْمُعْتَرْ The qani is who? The one who he doesn't complain. He has very little, but he doesn't complain. Like it could be somebody who's only eaten once for the, for the past three, four days, but he doesn't say anything. Allah says, أَطْئِمُهُ Feed him. And then he says also, المؤتر. المؤتر is the one who he actually asks. The one who actually asks. Mu'tar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who are in difficulty, those who are in some sort of pain with regards to their life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the faqir, the one who is in extreme state of difficulty, such that his back is broken. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those people who are in difficulty but they don't say anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those people who are in difficulty and they say something. And what, what, is, what is this? This is the, the food the, from the sacrifice, the sacrifice that you do at the end of Hajj, that's where that food is supposed to go. And so we, what we reflect upon this, that the purpose of Hajj, the purpose of the Uyhiyyah, the purpose of this entire thing is what? Helping other people. Being humanitarians, assisting other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not discriminate here and says, you only help Muslims, you only help Mu'mineen, you only help Ahlul Makkah, you only help Ahlul Medina, you only help Ahlul Arab. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says any person, no matter what their background is, whether if they are in difficulty, if they ask you, if they don't ask you, if they're in extreme state of pain, help them, support them, be a, support of, a, a person of assistance for them. And that's what we learn from this Hajj. And for many people, we think, you know, and, and rightly so, that the, you know, the Hajj is a, you know, the pilgrimage and you make an effort and stuff. And maybe some of us here will have the tawfiq to go to Hajj. But majority of us won't. Because that's just, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He invites whom He wills. But the point is that we can live the Hajj in our homes. We can live the Hajj in our community. We can live the Hajj amongst our family. There are many families who I know who are there, they're in difficulty, but they are too scared to go to their family member. They don't want to say anything. They, they feel too shy. That's, that's a problem. Your family should be so well connected, you should know when that person is struggling. You should know when your brother is struggling. You should know when that, when, when that person is struggling and in difficulty. You should know that. You should, you should be aware of that. Your neighbor who's in difficulty, who can't pay his bills, can't pay his rent, you should know about that. That is the maqsad of hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining here, that as, as far as we are concerned, as far as the udhiyah is concerned, that we have to become of those people who move towards that type of humanity. Move towards that type of, uh, of, of, of assistance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does he describe the, the, the Kaaba? He says, وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that we made this house mathaba. And mathab in the Arabic language, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ لَا لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ That Allah has made this house, he's made it a source of, uh, can, uh, uh, a source of reward and a source of rujua. Jasad wal qalb. He's made it a source of a, a place of return. So to a person in their heart and also in their body, they want to return back there. They want to return back there. We return there five times a day, every day. We return back to the Kaaba. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lin nas. So that means Sikhs, 
Jews, Christians, Hindus, all of these people have a, are supposed to have an attachment to the Kaaba. Kaif? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Linnas? And the perp- why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this is this concept of Hajj. The purpose of Hajj is what? At the end, the sacrifice, the kind of the ultimatum of it is to be a person of assistance for other people, to help other people, to be a, a, a concern for other people. And that's something that we learn about Hajj. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is, how does He end this ayah that I mentioned? وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Now strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, حَقَّ جِهَادِ A true struggle, a true struggle. People think that jihad means just to fight all the time. Your jihad is when you have to struggle for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any time. You guys have come here and made an effort, that was your jihad. That was your struggle, that was your strife. But really, truly make an effort. هُوَ جِتَبَاكُمْ he has chosen you people. He has chosen you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses different words for choosing. He uses istafa, okay? He, different manifestations of to choose someone. But this ijtaba is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses you because He knows you have a special characteristic within you. You know the analogy is like, let's say for example, you go to a job interview and the, 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 the employer says, okay, so we require you to do this and this and this and this. And you have no idea what, the, what, what is he talking about. And you're like, uh, I've never done this. He goes, okay, you've got the job. And you'd be like, uh, how, how did I get the job? I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not even qualified for this. And the employer says, no, I can see something in you. I can see something. I can see something special. That's ijtaba. That's ijtaba. And Allah says, huwa jitabakum. He has chosen you people. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجِ He hasn't made this deen difficulty for you. You see that the society that we're in, the community that we're in, we are those people who are chosen to sort the issues out. We are the ones. You know, you know people say, oh if only I could be at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. If only I could be back then. You are not there. You are here. These are your people. This is your time. These are your challenges. Those are your people out there. That's your time now. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you because He saw something in you. And if He didn't see something in you for this time, He would have chosen a time later or a time to come. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw something in each and every single one of us. That's why He chose us for this time. And that's why He chose us for the community that we are in. Allah says, مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ Ibrahim. This affair, this deen, it's not going to be easy. We are on the path of Ibrahim salam, our father. Ibrahim al Islam struggled. Ibrahim al Islam went through difficulty. It's not going to be easy. And life is not meant to be easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have made it so easy for all the Muslims and everything and all the kuffar in difficulty. That's not the purpose of this religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to put you through difficulty. Why? To see, are you a true, sincere Muslim or not? Are you truly on this path or not? Are you truly sincere on this, on this journey or not? That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He has named you Muslims. What does Muslim mean? Muslim means that you surrender. Muslim means that you humble yourself. Muslim means that you don't just, oh, why pray? Why, 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 why do I need to do this? And then, you know, you pray, pray that Allah puts different, oh Allah, why me? Why? It's not a question of why. Allah puts anything upon you, aslam, aslam, aslam. You just humble yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the most important thing. لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ Because your Prophet ﷺ will be an, 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 a, a witness to you. He will stand your muqiyama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what, your, what did your ummah do? What did they do? Come on, be a witness now. Stand in front of me and tell me what did your ummah do? Did you spread the message? Did you give the message? Ibrahim alayhi salam, وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا These four things, يَتْلُوا عَلِيهِمْ آيَاتِكَ هَلْ تَتْلُوا عَلِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا Did you re- recite our signs to them? Did you re- uh, teach the book? Did you teach wisdom? Did you purify them? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he's going to say yes. We are the product of that. We are the product of that. And then Allah says, وَتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ each and every single one of us are going to be witnesses unto Alan Nas mankind. Allah will ask us, what did you do for your community? That, that Sikh, that Hindu, that Jew, that non-Muslim, that atheist, whoever he is, that person who was out there, did you look after him? Did you care for him? Did you support him? He came knocking on your door. Were you there for him? Did you even know about him? Did you know that he was in uh, difficulty? Did you know anything about that? 
We are going to be witnesses unto mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And then he says, for aqimu salata wa atu zakah. You see, the, the, these two, we see this in the Quran so much, it's so beautiful. Allah says, wa aqimu salat. He doesn't say pray, he says establish. And aqama, aqama means not only to establish, but to stand. Mean that when we stand together and we pray, and we pray together, what does that mean? That doesn't just mean that we pray, we do ruku and sujood and qiyam, but we gel together. We learn about each other. We know about each other's names. And we know about each other's hal. This person standing next to you, do you know about his difficulty? Do you know about what str- struggle he's going through? Do you know if he's, if he's okay money-wise? Do you know if he's having problems trying to get his children married? Do you know about any of these issues? That's the whole purpose of the prayer. And so, so, so Allah says, establish that first. وَآتُوا zakah. Once you've established who are those people you need your help, now go and give them assistance. Give your arms, give, give your help. وَاَتَسِمُوا بِاللَّهِ And hold strong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ He is your master. نِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّسِيرَ What a beautiful master and what a beautiful helper. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his people who are assistants to others, helpers to other people. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to become of those people who understand that this hajj that is coming, maybe we don't have the tawfiq to go, but we revive the hajj within our homes. We revive the hajj within our community. We revive the hajj within our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والا Today we are on the 13th day of the Al-Qa'da and you know the nature of time time just really flies and before we know we'll be entering into the first 10 days of the Al-Hijjah and as I said, there may be some of us who have been given the tawfiq to go to hajj and maybe some who haven't. And so right now we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who haven't, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to go to hajj. If it's not next year, then the year after. If it's not that year, the year after that. Allah allow us, just invite us, O oh Allah. Allow us to, to come and, 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 and be, be invited there. But the second thing that we have to think about is the first 10 days of the hijjah and maybe we can speak about this some other time. But what, what will suffice is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqsim bihadil ashar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears by the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Wal Fajr, wa Layalin Ashar. The ulama of tafsir said that these Layalin Ashar, these 10 nights, are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And so, just like the last 10 days of Ramadan are blessed, likewise the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are blessed days. Are blessed days. And our ulama used to say that just as you finish off the days of Ramadan with the last 10 days of Ramadan, prepare yourself after Eid for the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. The first 10 days of the Hijjah are days of ibadah, days of sacrificing yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the first 10 days. And the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes certain times blessed. Yaqtas ba'd al awqad. He makes certain times in the day, in the year, blessed, with blessing. Okay? And this, these 10 days that are about to come are b- days of blessing. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na- rains down His nafaha, rains down His rahmat subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know about the day of, uh, of um, uh, Arafah, Yom Arafah, that it's a day which our Prophet sallallahu said that a person fasts on that day, you kafir, it will obliterate his sins from this previous year and the forthcoming year. One fast, one fast. What kind of blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings down on, on these days? And so it's just a reminder to myself and yourself, plan these, these 10 days that are coming. Think about the ibadah that you're going to do. Think about your state. Think about your community. Think about the people around you. Have you made an effort to go and see your neighbor? Have you made an effort to go and see maybe your parents or your uncles or your aunties or your cousins or your siblings? Have you made an effort to go and see what, what's going on? How are they? Are there any difficulty? Maybe bring those niyat into these 10 days. Maybe try and make an effort that now maybe the, the, the zakah that I've got or the sadaqah that I've got, I'm going to assist it with those people who are just in my city or those people who are in close range of me. And this is really the truly the maqsad of hajj. That sometimes we often forget. We often think the hajj, okay, it's in Makkah and Mina and Muzdalifah and I'm just here in Wolverhampton and I'm, I'm, I'm the faqir, <laughs> right? In reality, no. You, like I said, you can bring the hajj here. You can bring that pilgrimage. You can bring that sacrifice here if only you prepare to make that effort. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a tawfiq. And if one final point, that if you look at the, 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 the dhikr that is recommended for the hujjaj, what is it? Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. 
لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك that this is like a true kind of like a, like a, almost like a dressing down لبيك اللهم لبيك I am present for you oh, oh my Lord I am present for you you know it doesn't matter about anything else it doesn't matter about your work your job your family anything else the time of Hajj is about you وربكم that's it nothing else that's it it's just about you and your Lord and so and we take a lesson from that dhikr لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك there's no partner to you because what was, a, what was going on in the Bayt Allah? Shirk. So Allah is affirming here, La sharika lak. There's no, there's no partner to you. Inna alhamd wa ni'ma laka wal mulk. That the dominion and all praise and all blessings are only to you, Subhanak. Only to you. La sharika lak. There is no partner to you. And so let us become of those people who become present, become of the hadirin, become those who come forth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيد محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم على سيد محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم على سيد محمد في كل وقت وحين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد حتى ترث الأرض ومن عليها وأنت خير الوارثين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالأدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرباء وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام